Welcome everyone to Disruption Forum Retail. What a video that was. And I have to say, this is the 10th Disruption Forum. So apart from thanking our esteemed guests and our absolutely newcomers, I want to thank everybody who's been with us since day one, because the Disruption brand has been evolving outside of just Disruption Forum into Disruption Talks and many other things. But the focus today is, as you should have noticed from the video, retail itself. And what a day. There's no better day to discuss retail than the day before the iPhone gets released. And everybody, myself included, will be queuing outside Apple stores for the retail grail. And there's no point in showing off the logos right now, because I'm sure you've seen the logos of H&M, of Vaults, of uh, Delivery Hero, Unilever, and many others. However, what is worth mentioning is the subjects and the themes that we will be discussing, such as speed of delivery, medium of delivery, drones included, synergies, adaptation in a post-pandemic world, and many, many more. So as a last piece, I wanted to give a shout out to our media partner, tech.eu. Thanks for being with us. And I would like to proceed to the first panel that we have. And the panel that we will be discussing is redefining delivery and shopping through quick commerce. And before I introduce the guests onto our stage, I want to say this, you know, when you sometimes have this, you go on LinkedIn and you see somebody's profile and it just looks too good to be true. Like you have two degrees from Harvard, you have major companies like Sainsbury's and Delivery Hero. But today we are lucky because it's not too good to be true. It actually is true. Welcome, Milena. What an introduction. Thank you very much. I mean, absolutely deserving. I had a look at your LinkedIn profile just a second ago. And yes, you know, I've, if it's fake, you can tell us, but I don't think it is, right? <laughs> it's not. No, it's real. <laughs> um. So listen, uh, I have a good idea of who you are, but our audience should have a better one. So if we could begin with an introduction of yourself. Yes, so I'm Elena Lazarevska. I'm VP Commercial for Quick Commerce at Delivery Hero. So I lead the commercial team, as my title says. I joined Delivery Hero about a year ago, and prior to that, I started my career with Bain & Company in London, and I was with Sainsbury's for quite a few years in various commercial roles as well. So kind of the resident retail expert here at Delivery Hero. Uh, and my, the scope of my role is um, for our quick commerce business. Um, deciding on a lot of the things that entail commercial and category management. So what is our assortment uh, in our dark stores in particular? How do we price? How do we run promotions? How do we work with suppliers? Uh, and building our advertising tech platform on the quick commerce side as well. Uh, see, that's what I wanted to ask you. What do you do? And you just gave me that. But is your typical day looking like covering all of those bases that you just mentioned? Or what's it like to be you, a delivery hero? <laughs> no typical day, I think, is the standard answer, isn't it? Uh, but I would say I have absolutely amazing team that supports with all of those topics. So my day tends to be uh, jumping around from topic to topic, understanding what progress we're making, whether on strategy, on our, on our product development and tech development uh, and implementation in the 40 countries and seven platforms that we have around the world as well. In fact, I'm dialing in from Dubai where we're visiting our Talibad platform. So you'll see some of the branding behind me as well. Is the scooter an element of that branding, the orange one that you have behind you? Yes, the orange, the blue and the green are very much the Talibad colors. So I've heard that Delivery Hero is quite a big thing, no longer a guard startup, right? Like every time I look at Bloomberg, I see some news from Nicholas about growth this, growth that. In such a huge organization, how does your team play along with the multitude of other teams? Yeah, so Delivery Hero is mostly a restaurant food delivery company that is still the vast majority of our business. And that is still where we're growing over 100% year on year. I think we have 10 consecutive quarters of 100% quote and quarter growth. However, within this business, we also have what we call new verticals. So innovation that we're doing within Delivery Hero. And the largest one by far of that is our quick commerce business. That delivered 240, I believe, percent growth um, half on half for the first half of this year. So being part of a very large organization, we're part of the DAX, which is the equivalent of the FTSE 100 in the UK, um, in Germany, um, big company with, uh, with resources, big presence around the world. 
but very much within quick commerce in a startup mentality. So we're trying to um, actually uh, grow this business as fast as we can and in an in as agile way as we can. So interacting with the rest of the restaurant business, but also starting up a lot of things on our own as well. So team in particular, very team and tech team actually manages the uh, in store operations and Hello. Uh, I think if you could repeat that, because I think you broke oh, up no. just for a second. Okay. Um, apologies for the bad connection here. No, no, no. Now is good. Now is um, good. No worries. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So if uh, if you could uh, if you could repeat what you just said, uh, at least uh, at least a quick Everything. Sentence, a quick sentence, uh, so we can continue. Quick sentence. Yes. Basically, Delivery Hero is a big company. Quick commerce within Delivery Hero is a startup, so um, we're trying to uh, build a full new business within this company. So we interact with many teams, but um, trying to do it in as agile and as fast way as possible. Okay. So quick commerce, right? Uh, some say that it's the next generation of e-commerce. Others say that it's something that's built on top of it. Some are saying that this will be the new expectation that I will be receiving my groceries really quickly whenever I want to. And some say that it's something that's uh, perhaps a fad, something that might not really work out in terms of economics. Uh, and also that it's riding the wave of hypervaluations and uh, seed, their seed rounds becoming series A rounds in terms of size and so on and so on. So if you could tell me, where are we really with quick commerce and what's the real potential, especially the one that Delivery Hero sees? But if you have a industry insight, that's also something that would be very welcome. So maybe I'll start with how we got to actually start quick commerce. So um, we have two flavors of quick commerce, so to speak. So we are opening our own dark stores, what we call d -Mart. Um, and this tends to be, I think, a lot of the model that you see in Europe as well with uh, the pure play startups that are doing quick commerce. We also partner with uh, local shops, so supermarkets, pharmacies, uh, convenience stores, florists, um, all sorts of shops. And we also deliver on their behalf. We come with an existing platform and existing customers. And what we've seen is by offering this additional service and offering groceries and other items that customers can buy on a, on a daily basis, it increases our overall customer lifetime value, the frequency that customers shop with us on the total platform. So for us, this is um, an amazing customer proposition and obviously adds quite a lot of value to our customers and to our business as well. So we see huge potential in this. Um, we're still a small-ish part of Delivery Hero, but a very fast-growing part. And we see this actually contributing to a very significant um, percent of our total Delivery Hero orders in the next two, three years. Where the overall potential of quick commerce is, I guess, is a little bit to be seen. It is a new industry. There are some question marks around how much do customers want to be delivered at home? But the signs that we're seeing is that um, in many of our countries, customers start by ordering their impulse needs. So snacks and beverages and ice cream, which is a really big category for us. But wherever we extend the assortment, even in the more standard grocery categories, fruits and vegetables or dairy, cheese, eggs, uh, they start adding those to the basket. And again, they start shopping more frequently with us. So plenty to grow and plenty to, to find out and to understand. And I guess the future will, will tell how big this will get. I completely agree. Uh, we could just pull up a crystal ball and try to predict the future. But I think in this uh, scenario where you are the retail expert, Ned Guru also deals a lot with retail, I think we can make some predictions and throw a Hail Mary that they're just going to materialize and see in the coming years how right or wrong we were. And uh, I, I hear what you're saying, because of course, in this business, uh, it's, it's the basket size that always matters. The larger the order can be, and that offsets the margins, makes the delivery person and everybody else's life sort of much more economically sane. So 
we are looking at a situation in which we weren't really encouraged to leave the house over the past year or two, much rather stay at home kind of setup. So how much do you think that of those habits that we have created because we're not supposed, not allowed, or just don't feel like leaving the house, how much of that will stay? And how much of that was just a temporary response to those factors that I just mentioned? So there's no doubt that COVID really accelerated these businesses and this business model. However, coming out on the other end, um, I heard it described really nicely by an investor that the experiences that customers had during COVID, which are superior experiences to the ones they had before, are the ones that are going to stay. And having your everyday groceries delivered to your house removing the cognitive load of having to plan for the whole week or the whole month, not having to store a lot of things at home, we see that as 100% a superior experience. And we really believe that this behavior is going to stay. Now, it isn't uh, what it was during COVID. We definitely see whenever lockdowns are released in a country, we see a little bit of a dip um, in our orders. But on average, customers stay, they increase their purchase frequency with us over time, they increase the repertoire of products that they buy with us over time. So we really see the staying as a longer term habit, not just the COVID habit. So you sort of address this, but just surface level. So I want to dive much deeper because you told me what it was like in 2020, what it's like in 2021. And I want to ask you about 2022. Uh, just a general question, Delivery Hero 2022 Quick Commerce, what's the expectation? What are the plans? As much as you can say, of course, we're not in the business of breaking any NDAs. Um, and I'm also thinking about what you mentioned, so the offering beyond the food. So when you're talking about 2022, if you could also frame it in terms of uh, the current top categories and the ones that you mentioned that are growing and maybe something that nobody really expected that becomes a category, anything like that? <laughs> So 2022 is going to be a story of continued growth for us. We are in the middle of budget season on this side and deciding kind of how fast and how far uh, we want to push this business. We see expansion as twofold. Um, one is extending our coverage, so actually making quick commerce available to all Delivery Hero customers. That isn't the case today. So of course. One DMART only delivers in a radius of several kilometers, so not all our customers actually have this available. So we want to make this available to all of our customers, whether via our own dark stores or by signing up with a partnership with local shops, so being able to deliver from the neighborhood of that particular customer. And second, um, we want to grow our existing business, of course, as well, and that means increasing assortment improving how we actually sell that assortment, how we merchandise that assortment to customers. A mobile phone is a relatively small screen and browsing through 5,000, 6,000 items on a mobile screen isn't the nicest experience ever. So how do we make that more helpful, uh, more faster, uh, better, more inspirational for customers? That is one thing that we're definitely innovating on. And that we believe will drive uh, both frequency and average basket values for our customers. So growth on all sides. In terms of categories, so um, the first and the biggest market that we are going after is groceries, but groceries in the big definition isn't anything you would buy in a large supermarket, for example, not just, uh, not just the fresh fruits or the packaged foods. Um, we also work with quite a few pharmacies for over-the-counter medicine. Um, we work with florists, sometimes bookshops as well. So books are still bought from bookshops in some countries. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything interesting that we sell that isn't expected. Uh, I, I see the potential for this for, of course, the very big bulky items aren't going to be carried on a on a two wheel bike <laughs> or on a bike or on a motorcycle but anything that actually falls within the limits of carrying things on a on a bike or a motorcycle for now is very much within the scope for the future this could extend further as well Okay, I'll throw out a prediction. I'm looking forward to uh, autonomous vehicles. Uh, there's a startup called Neuro. I've seen them incorporating in Walmart and Domino's Pizza across campuses. So maybe some of that will be uh, will be in the future. Um, and uh, 
perhaps perhaps I'm watching too much Silicon Valley on HBO, but uh, there was the Smart Fridge episode and perhaps an integration between Delivery Hero and Smart Fridges. So you just know what I want. And you just mentioned, I'm not in the business of going through the app, thousands mm. of items. Perhaps Delivery Hero will just know me better than I know myself in terms of groceries, of course. I like uh, that. Our so suite is actually, we have autonomous uh, vehicle deliveries in Sweden on trial at the moment. We have a very cute robot Dora that is delivering on the streets of Stockholm. So that's not so much the future. It's a little bit the now as well. OK, OK. Uh, is that uh, something that we can Google or is that something that's yeah. Uh, OK? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Um, so you mentioned expanding the density, so basically making sure that the service is standardized and no one is sort of left behind in terms of what is the expectation towards Delivery Hero. So you spoke about that density, of course, important. Can you juxtapose it with having more SKUs on shelves? Like if there, of course, these are parallel things that you focus on at the same time, but is the density that much more important than the breadth of what I can order? regardless if I'm in the area of a DMART or not? They solve two different things. Density solves for speed of delivery, and the breadth of assortment solves for uh, the size of the basket and also the frequency of a customer. So that's why they're juxtaposed on top of one another. Um, and our speed of delivery is, on average, about 20 minutes around the world. So we can get, in, we're a lot faster in certain areas and we certainly can be a lot faster. If we increase the density of our stores, we will be significantly faster than that. So we're making some decisions on where is that really important to customers and how do we balance that with the assortment size that we have in the stores as well. Okay, so this sounds all peachy. What <laughs> is the one thing or two things or how many you tell me that could hamper the growth, that could stand in the way as an obstacle, that all of a sudden I won't be seeing on Bloomberg anymore those 100% quarter on quarter growth news? Yeah. Um, well, we still need to figure out how we make this business um, a sustainable business globally. I think us and a lot of our competition are trying to, trying to work that out. So. What could hamper the growth is that we get stuck in um, impulse sort of purchase. So customers don't consider us for their weekly shopping needs or their monthly shopping needs. And only when they need one, two impulse items and the ice cream dessert that they're having after dinner, that is not a sustainable basket. Uh, and if the majority of the baskets look like that, then we have a problem. But that isn't what we're seeing so far. So I, I find it hard to believe that we actually regress to that sort of situation. Um, the other thing, I guess, that could hamper the growth is we get to, um, I mean, we think about unit profitability, but also store profitability. So for a store to be profitable, much like any retailer, you need footfall or you need orders. So when we get to areas that actually don't have much customer density, which means the maximum potential orders of that area aren't ever going to justify profitability of the store, um, and we do end up expanding to those sorts of areas, that could potentially hamper the um, uh, overall sustainability of the business as well. Of course, we take all of these things into account, where we open stores, how we open stores, so that the demand of that store can actually um, maintain it. And I think this is where our two models of having dark stores, but also partnering with local stores uh, really comes into play as well. So some areas around the world are going to be served by a dark store and some are probably never going to be served by a dark store, but only through our local store partnerships. Okay, makes complete sense. So now it looks like we have three and a half minutes. So I wanna do like a, quick fire question round. Uh, we are back to the crystal ball, to the magic wand, and predicting the future. So let's assume a wildest dream scenario. We already mentioned autonomous vehicles. Um, so I want to ask you about two things here. So uh, the how, the medium of delivery, and the what. So the first how, drones, unmanned aerial vehicles. Yes, no, maybe. Mm, I think yes, especially for slightly more remote areas. Again, something we're actually testing in Sweden. Okay, Sweden's lucky. 
Sounds good. And when it comes to the what in the stores, uh, we know of uh, many companies that have actually invested into the hydroponic growth of herbs and salads. So basically establishing like manufacturing plants with vertical lines of, of uh, plants, herbs, fruit, whatever uh, the human body needs. Uh, perhaps a 3D printer for meat alternatives, stuff like that. Is that at all possible or is Delivery Hero more or less focused on uh, what already exists and is created rather than becoming the creator of the products in store as well? Absolutely, both of those. Uh, and in fact, we've already started on the route of creating some of the products or rather brands and products in our, um, in our dark stores. We have a brand called Everyday, which is for coffee and bakery products, which is a Delivery Hero designed brand and now a global brand of freshly brewed coffee or I've been having iced coffee every day here in Dubai that gets delivered to your door in 15 minutes, which is great. So 100% uh, brands that we own, brands that we create, brands that we develop, but also partnerships that we have. So um, there is plenty of companies, again, here in Dubai, it's a perfect place where you'd want to be hydroponically growing vegetables because there isn't so much spare water to go around. So partnering with the company that does that and actually growing it in our dark store so we can harvest and then send super fresh to customers, very much something that we're looking into and exploring. All right. So just to recap, because we're in the last 60 seconds of, of this panel, uh, here to stay, here to grow with avenues in terms of what is being delivered and how it is being delivered. Uh, did I miss anything? Any conclusion that you might want to build on top of this? I think that summarizes it nicely. I would say there is plenty of innovation that is to come in this space. Um, I know there's a lot of new brands, challenger brands, but also established uh, consumer packaged goods brands that are very excited to be in this channel or not. And I think we all have to discover how do also we as customers shop on this new channel? How do we behave? How does our um, consumption occasions change? Because now we can have things delivered. And I think that's a really exciting place to be for all of us to learn and grow this new channel as well. OK, so Milena, thank you so much for all of those nuggets of wisdom. Um, so uh, I would like to announce a short five minute break after which you will have the absolute pleasure of hearing my dear friend Dave discuss with executives from Pandora, Unilever and Echo Shoes post pandemic retail, how to adapt strategy, mindset and innovation projects to what's next. So once again, Milena, thank you so much for today and everybody see you in five minutes. Thanks for having me.